before we call her. Spin's not sitting over here anymore and slacking. Any, have a shot of flying, right? Any discussion about the agenda before we call the roll? If not, call the roll, please. Shot? Yes. Klein? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Waller? Yes. Walling? Yes. Okay, thank you. Consent agenda tonight for payments and, well, first of all, minutes of the May 16th regular city council meeting. And then we have payments for contract services, including the following Bolton and Mink comprehensive plan update, $6,000. $112.50, Bolton and Mink 2020 downtown improvements in the amount of $10,735. <coughs> Bolton and Mink 2019 sanitary sewer SIP lighting, $2,433. Bolton and Mink Weast Park improvements, $870. Ethos Group Design Group Hotel Pati facility evaluation in the amount of $21,000. $156.35. Um, Sam Bedick, run, uh, runway 14, 30 seconds, phase two IFE in the amount of $3,500. Those items we just went over, the total is $44,803.85. For claims, registers, and financials, tonight we have $1,894,016.33. We have a number of licenses and permits tonight, including the following. Perry, Iowa um, Lodge, number 407, doing business as the Elks Lodge, number 407, uh, 2823 Willis Avenue. They want a renewal of a Class C liquor license with outdoor service area and Sunday sales privilege. Also, we have Casey's Marketing Company doing business as Casey's General Store, number 26 at 2617 Willis Avenue. Renewal of a Class E Liquor license with Class C, carry out beer permit, Class B wine permit, and Sunday sales privilege. Casey's Marketing Company is also um, updating their ownership by replacing James um, Pistello and Julia uh, Jackowiski with Scott uh, Faber and Eric Larson on their board of directors. We also tonight have Perry Chamber of Commerce at 1124 Willis Avenue. They want a um, new five day class beer permit for the second street block party on Friday, July 22nd, 2022 on second street from Warford to Lucinda. This event will be fenced off with the main entrance and ID checkpoint on the Warford street side, beer ticket sales, um, beer truck and portable restrooms will be in the fenced area. The actual five day permit will run from July 19, 2022 to July 23, 2022. A five day permit is the shortest permit of time and that licenses can be granted, even though the event is really only planned for one day. Police and fire inspections have been completed and are on file at City Hall. Need a motion to approve these items? I make a motion that we approve the Any discussion on the, the items we just went over for the consent agenda? I, I've got a question on, on the Ethos Design Group. Will we get a written report on that? Is that yep, done yep, that's part of the final uh, deal. So that I think probably sometime later in July, we should have a report, maybe August sometime. So thank you. Yep. That's the only question. Okay. It'll be very similar to what we got back on the McCurry Center. So right. Yep. That was pretty thorough, as I recall. Yep. Any further discussion on the consent agenda items? If not, call the roll, please. Walling? Yes. Mahler? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Shot? Yes. Klein? Yes. Okay, thank you. Moving on to city administrative report. All right. I have a couple of things. Uh, generally, construction is probably a little slow this week with the rain we got, um, but uh, did have a couple of things come up today that are good news. So first off, uh, I met with Alliant Energy and their contractor that's going to be doing the customer hosted solar project for us. Um, so they uh, hope they're going to be going through their design phase and procurement process, and they'll be breaking ground as soon as frost gets out next spring. So they're kind of a year behind on where they wanted to be, but they were able to bundle Perry's project with three other of these projects that are similar in Iowa. Um, so they'll be doing all three next year. So there's that. And then I just got an email this afternoon that we were 
awarded ten thousand uh, dollars from IEDA for the child care market study. So hopefully we can get that going and uh, get that done. So, and that's all I've got. Does anybody have any questions for me? All right. A couple of good news items anyway. Mayor Council comments. I think all I have is just a couple of reminders. Um, the two are related, I think. As, as the weather's gotten nicer, some days anyway, um, I see more more people out, of, which is a good thing. Some of them are speedy, and I see a, a lot more um, kids and adults out walking or jogging, and and uh, you know speeding and people walking and jogging, walking their dog in the streets. It's just not a good mix. Or kids playing on the streets. So just our my annual reminder for the summertime: just um, slow down and certainly look out for people out having a good time. We don't want any, we don't want any accidents or fatalities. So that's my, my reminder. Um, I don't, it's good news, but I don't want it to turn into bad news anyway. Council comments? I'd like to just say thank you to whoever, I know there was a bunch of them out there and uh, I think, you know, they did a wonderful job. Thank you. And it's good to see Chief Bond here. <laughs> yes, it is. For sure. Okay. I, I've got one comment. Um, I've got some real concerns on the bus drop off at Third and um, Estella. We have a yield sign there. There's no four way stop anywhere around there. And it's crazy. Those kids run all over. They don't have a school crossing guard there. Uh, and I'd like to see a four-way stop up there. They where they picked up a, a couple blocks away. They do have a four-way stop, which it still is. And I think we're the one that takes care of that. Chief, Chief Bond. We will take a look at it. We have several. huge amount um, the people that own the storage facility right there have put the lock up all the way around the parking because everybody was parking in there not watching kids back and out not looking i think there's been several accidents there there was one there this weekend i was hit there and it was never reported the guy gave me some cash for me to tell my, um, <laughs> <laughs> My brother in law's truck was totally there a couple of years ago. It might be a thing that we need to discuss with the people that are going to take and move that bus out to a better position. Paper plane is a very You bet. But uh, if nothing else, let's get the bus out to that area. I've ridden my bike through there and it scared me to death. Yep. Okay, thank you. Other council comments? If, if there are none, we'll move on to open forum. Next item is open forum. As per usual, speakers will be asked to step up to the microphone if they're, if they're present in the room and state their name and address. For the record, individuals speaking will be given up to three minutes to address the council. Again, this is your opportunity to talk about any item that's on the agenda or any other item for that matter. Um, during the open forum time. Do we have anybody either on Zoom or, or in person for open forum? Hi, good evening, uh, Mayor. My name's Mitchell Kearns. Uh, I'm here, uh, I'm supposed to introduce myself as Dewey Jr., but uh, I'm here on behalf of Dwayne Dalen, 
Um, so he asked, he's on vacation down south, down at Table Rock this, uh, this week. So he asked if I could fill in, and I said I would, and I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mitchell Kearns. I live in Panora, Iowa. Um, I started at Finnis at Thalen and Powell probably, oh, five, four months ago now. Um, I had my own practice in Des Moines for about a year and a half, uh, and I decided I didn't like the city living. So I decided to move out west, and um, it's been great so far. Uh, I'm from Dexter, Iowa originally, so um, small town is kind of my thing. And so I just want to introduce myself and greet you all. So thank oh, welcome. You. I'm glad, yeah, thanks, you. I'm glad you're enjoying life out west again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Anybody else for open forum? <coughs> Good evening, Lindsay Pasuti, 1119 Warford Street, representing the chamber. Just giving a little update. Uh, it's a busy season right now, getting ready for different events and activities. We just had Friday Fest last Friday, the very first farmer's market last Thursday. Really great turnout for Kids Fest. Not that the chamber was too involved with that, but the library did a really great job. So I want to commend them. Um, so just lots of things going on as you just approved um, the street dance on 2nd Street later on this um, next month. So lots of things going on. Um, don't want to steal Mary Murphy's thunder, but I know she's really excited about it. She's not on tonight, but uh, we just found out that we got a $10,000 grant from Tyson to expand the Healthy Steps Produce Giveaway program at the Farmer's Market. So really exciting to have on the second and fourth Thursday of the month free produce giveaway that we are purchasing from local vendors and then able to help folks um, access um, local uh, great produce. Um, we will continue on our third Thursday event at the Farmer's Market. So we'll have healthy health and wellness night um, this month, public safety night next month, back to school night, and then public works in September. So really excited to have that event, those activities going um, for the community and um, a number of summer events planned as well. In addition to our regular chamber coffees and other things that we do throughout the year. So thanks. Sounds good. How, how, are, how are vendors looking so far for Farmer's Market? Do we have a pretty good number? Last year, we ended up with a pretty good number, I think. Yeah, it's always a little bit uh, slow to start. Uh, so Thursday, we just had a handful of them. No one has uh, produce just yet. But this Thursday, uh, we'll probably nearly double the number of vendors now that things are finally coming on. So um, we'll be slowly but surely filling up that block on 2nd Street. Sounds good. Always a good event. Thank you. Anybody else for open forum? Misty Von Baron, 2409 Iowa Street. And since Lindsay talked about Kids Fest, I just wanted to thank Susie um, for taking an awesome picture from the city hall window. So if you check out our Facebook page, you can see that of the foam that came out. Um, it, was a, it was a really awesome event. And I think it was a great way to kick off the summer. We had probably an estimate of about a thousand people that came through. Um, we served over 735 meals. So it was a great, a great event and it just kicks off our summer. So check out our website and Facebook page, we have something going on every single day for birth through adults. So we're in the swing of things again. So excited. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like that event gets larger every year. It's always a great event. That phone machine is incredible. I, I just want to interrupt that I am here. I am just um, on Zoom and the Kids Fest and the grant that we got uh, from Tyson is just um, the, the momentum of all these programs are just um, going faster and faster and growing. And it's, it's a great feeling. Thank you. It's a result of a lot of hard work. Thank you. And to you and your staff and your volunteers. Matt McDivitt, uh, 2101 Iowa Street. Uh, I'm going to be very brief on this one. From, uh, just give you an update on peri-economic development happenings. Uh, if you have been or haven't been in the industrial park, you need to be. Uh, so thank you to the council and the city for, uh, you know, sharing in a, a loan uh, prospect with us. Uh, this new spec building on the steel is already being built. The building's already going up. Uh, and we are, and uh, what I hope will be the fastest sale around uh the marketing went up uh a week ago thursday morning and by three o'clock that afternoon there was a very serious prospect uh that's interested so uh don't want to jump the gun too much on that but we're super hopeful but it does matter 
uh, you know, and taking a little bit of risk uh, and, and they are uh, in love with the community. Um, also, we've been working with Sven and Daniel on some, uh, and our local companies here on some workforce development initiatives. Uh, several companies need employees and, and, uh, and we are, you know, interviewed them, we've listened to them and are going to be coming up with some programming to help, uh, to help them, you know, through this tough, tough time. That's, uh, and, and so I think there's a lot of good things happening here. There's a lot of momentum as you drive through the community, a lot of building projects, uh, and, and several others that are, that are going to make things, you know, better. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the update. Anybody else for open forum? If not, we'll move on to next item is a special consideration. Um, Mr. Ben Brown at 1209 Third Street is going to talk to us tonight about a request he has related to um, uh, receiving a, perhaps a special variance to allow ducks to remain on his property. Um, you want to go ahead and talk about sure. ducks? Uh, yeah, I was probably here about 10 years ago with chickens. And I think from that discussion, now the city ordinance is six, six chickens. Uh, don't really need to make a new ordinance for it. Just have a couple of ducks to keep as pets. Just looking for a, a special waiver to keep them as pets on my property. So I'm not sure what I really need to add to that. I did. I think I sent a letter to the city. Yep. So uh, right now they've got a eight by eight by four foot pen that they stay in most of the time. Uh, during the winter, they stay in a six by eight shed. I keep them in some straw. Uh, it's a white Pekin duck and female mallard duck. Kids love them. It, when they are out, they kind of run around the neighborhood, all the neighbors know them. They come up, say hi, give them worms. That's <laughs> all they really do. <laughs> so, okay. Don't know what else I need to add to that. Uh, you know, how often are they out there? And are you there um, when they're out? I'm usually around when they're out, or I, I work from home, so I'm home all day. Um, if they're out, if they're out for a couple hours or maybe even a whole day, I don't they find refuge in my, uh, uh, in some of the bushes on my property. So, yeah, pretty smart ducks. I don't wander too far. Um, I think Shetlers picked them up on Second Street one time. Some other neighbors didn't know whose duck it was. So we picked up one of my ducks. And then I had another neighbor on Second Street that came across them and put them in the fridge. Haven't, doesn't seem to be too big of an issue with my neighbors. Um, I've checked with all of them. So. So what you're looking for is a special variance to allow you to keep yeah. those legally, right? Yes. Okay. I think we'll have to look at that and just mm -hmm. decide where it, we come it up. It would have to be on another agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Totally understand. Right. Just came to the, today to make my case. So. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks you. for meeting. Appreciate with, your time. For, Thanks for meeting with us and going over what you're looking at there. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. The questions feel free to ask. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it'll be on our future agenda, as Ben indicated. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to old business. First item under old business is approval of pay application number 12 for the wastewater treatment facility improvements. Pay application number 12 in the amount of $853,882.80 um, to Woodruff Construction for the construction of the wastewater treatment facility improvements. To date, total payments requested by the contractor are 32.8% of the total amount of work to be completed under the contract. All documents have been reviewed and signed by the engineer and are recommended for approval. Need a motion, please? Can I make a motion to approve pay application number 12 for the wastewater treatment facility improvements? I'll second. Discussion? Making good time. Yes, they are. I don't know, Matt or Dave, I think it's on. Do one of you want to give an update on the project? So most of the work the last, honestly, probably the last month has been related to the structures on the, on the site. So mostly building work, a um, couple of things to highlight. Uh, the old aeration buildings, those things are starting to get their improvements made to those. The elements are going to stay. Uh, we started leak testing the clarifiers here in the last week to make sure they're going to hold uh, one past. One of them, we got to do some extra work to it to get it to get it 
to hold. Um, beyond that, it's mainly been the UV building has started uh, coming up, the operations building, uh, which is one of the first ones you see coming in uh, near recycle. They're starting to make improvements to that building. So uh, a lot of structural stuff and that'll continue like that through the summer. So that'll be the focus over the next few months. And then uh, we'll start to gravitate towards getting uh, mechanicals installed, electricals installed. Uh, we did have a conversation a little bit last week about some delays on some of the electrical equipment and how long it's going to take us to get some of those. So the contractor is trying to order things as early as he can, but uh, we keep our fingers crossed that everything goes smooth with that. So, questions? Most of those will all be closed for winter work. Then. Right. Yep. That's the intention. Yep. So yep. We'll get the. Fun. Yeah. It's coming on. They're doing a good job. If the rain would quit coming, that would be a good thing. So. <laughs> Okay, any questions for Matt? No, not. Thank you. Um, call the roll, please, if there's no further discussion. Berkland? Yes. Klein? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shop? Yes. Okay. Next item under under uh, old business approval of pay application number one for phase one of the re relocation of runway 14 slash 32, pay application number one in the amount of 134000 thousand eighty one dollars and forty eight cents to windhold excavating llc for grading work on phase one of the relocation of one way 14 30 seconds has been received and signed by the engineer and is recommended for approval need a motion for that one i move that we approve pay application number one for phase one of the relocation of second well matt and i were just out there a little bit ago uh, and they have moved a lot of dirt. So if you get a chance to go drive by, I highly recommend that. They're doing a great job. I think they've ran into a few uh, unknown issues with some of the areas of sand out there. Um, so, but I think getting all that taken care of, kind of coring that out and putting good material back in to have a good base. Um, while we're out there, you can probably see my shoes are a little wet. Matt pushed me into the creek uh, as I was trying. Well, so it is wet out there. I can report that. So. Okay. Any further discussion on that um, request? If not, call the roll, please. Walling? Yes. Mahler? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Shot? Yes. Klein? Yes. Thank you. Next item under old business. Uh, letter C, resolution approving the purchase of additional um, stream mitigation bank credits. As part of the airport runway expansion project, it is necessary to mitigate unavoidable adverse impacts to streams and wetlands as stated in the airport supplemental environmental assessment dated August of 2020. This resolution authorizes the city administrator and or the mayor to execute the documents needed to acquire an additional 695 mitigation banking credits at a cost of $52,125 um, from McCorkle Stream Mitigation Bank as required by the Army Corps of Engineer, ACE. For the uh, necessary 404 permit CEMVR-RD-2020-610, this required work will be 100% funded by the FAA. A copy of the full supplemental environmental assessment is available for review at City Hall. Need, need a motion, please. Make a motion to pass resolution to approve the purchase of additional stream mitigation bank credits. Second. Discussion. Matt can just talk about this one and the next one. I was yes. gonna say, yep, I was just gonna say we covered two roads. So we were here a little bit ago. Uh, we, we bought some stream bank credits early in the year, if you remember that. Uh, the way that process works, we had set into that with an expectation of what we thought we would use. The credits get sold rather quickly for both wetlands and stream bank credits. Uh, so we, we purchased based on the initial review. Uh, this has been through Army Corps review. The Army Corps came back and said, we would like you to get just a little bit more. And so that's why we're back buying some of these additional credits. Um, the council action item behind this one is related to the wetland credits that we have to purchase. Similar, similar process. Uh, this actually will come back and finalize this in about October on the wetlands bank, but they're available. The FAA has authorized us to move forward with it. 
as well as the core. So we'll go ahead and, and do that process, get those purchased so that can get in the queue for FAA reimbursement for us. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a process as we get through and when we start to get through the actual uh, time frame where we begin construction there, we'll finalize the actual number of wetlands, but I, we're not expecting this part to change. But uh, we'll see for sure when we get to, to October. But uh, so that's that's uh, the next this item and the next item. Any questions for Matt or additional discussion on these credits? If not, call the roll, please. Mahler? Yes. Klein? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Walling? Yes. Shop? Yes. Okay. Letter D under old business. Resolution approving the purchase of wetland mitigation bank credits. As part of the airport runway extension project, it is necessary to mitigate unavoidable adverse effects to streams and wetlands that sit in the airport supplemental environment assessment dated August 2020. This resolution authorizes the city administrator and mayor to execute the documents needed to acquire a, a, um, a 9.5 emergent wetland credits at a cost of $570,000 from um, the Corkle Wetland Mitigation Bank as required by the Army Corps of Engineer for the necessary 404 permit CEM BR RD 2020 610. This required work will be 100% funded by the FAA. A copy of the full supplemental environmental assessment is available for review at City Hall. Need a motion, please? Uh, move to pass a resolution approving the purchase of wetland mitigation bank credits. I'll second that. Any further discussion on the purchase of the wetland mitigation credits? If not, call the roll, please. Falling. Yes. Berkland. Yes. Baller. Yes. Shot. Yes. Blind. Yes. Letter E under old business. Resolution approving an agreement with the FAA for flight commissioning. This agreement would be with the Federal Aviation Administration FAA for flight commissioning on the approach equipment into the newly uh, relocated and extended runway at the Prairie Municipal Airport. The agreement would allow the FAA to fly the approaches into the airport to certify they are functional and are accurately installed from a pilot's perspective. This action is required as part of the new runway construction project and would be completed once the project is completed as far enough along to accommodate the check. The agreement would cost $16,737.84 and would be reimbursable under grant funding. Motion, please. I make a motion to pass a resolution approving an agreement with the FAA for flight commissioning. I'll second that. Discussion? Pretty thorough uh, summary on that one, but just part of the construction process is kind of the final stamp of this is okay to land on. So. I think it'll be fun when that happens because that'll be probably one of the last things, right? Any further discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Mahler? Yes. Walling? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Shot? Yes. Klein? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to new business resolution setting a public hearing for voluntary annexation. The city of Perry has received applications for voluntary annexation from Mr. and Mrs. Kyle Baxter and Men's Land Company, LLC, for parcels of real estate located in Dallas County adjoining to the city of Perry's uh, city limits. They wish to be annexed. This resolution would set a public hearing for council to receive comments on this matter of voluntary annexation for July 18th, 2022 in the second floor meeting room of the town craft building located at 1122 Willis Avenue, Perry, Iowa, 6 p.m. This resolution would also, also, excuse me, would also authorize that the hearing notice be published and that a copy of the application be provided to the Dallas County Board of Supervisors per Iowa code. Need a motion, please. I would make a motion to pass a resolution setting a public hearing for annexation. Any discussion on setting a date for this public hearing? If not, call the roll, please. Berkland? Yes. Klein? Yes. Smaller? Yes. Walling? Yes. Shop? Yes. Okay. 
Moving on to approval of a tree board reappointment. Mr. Jeff Hicks has submitted a request to be reappointed to the tree board on a three year term, which would end on May 31, 2025. If reappointed, Mr. Hicks has, has been an active member of the board and is currently chair, chairman. Need a motion, please? Can I move that we uh, approve the tree board as reappointment? Discussion on this reappointment? No, Mr. Hicks has been on tree board for a long time and has always given really good insight and has a lot of great experience. Again, we, we thank him as well as all of our volunteers who serve on these boards and commissions. Any further discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Wally? Yes. Klein? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Mahler? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay. Approval of a planning and zoning uh, commission member, Mr. Matt Hicks submitted a letter of intent on May 24th, <coughs> excuse me, 2022 voluntary to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission, which currently holds a vacant seat. Mr. Hicks stated in his letter of intent as a longtime member of the community and being knowledgeable in both building and fire code would make him a good fit to serve on the commission. This uh, appointment would be for a four year term and if appointed would end on June 6th. 2026. Motion, please. Thank you for the motion to approve planning and zoning commission member Matt Hicks. Second. Discussion on this appointment? Other than thanking Mr. Hicks for volunteering. If there's no further discussion, call the roll, please. Berkland? Yes. Mahler? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Klein? Yes. Okay. Approval of a board of adjustment. Uh, member. Mr. Matt Hicks has also submitted a letter of intent on May 24th, 2022, volunteering to serve on the Board of Adjustment, which currently holds a vacant seat. Mr. Hicks stated in his letter of intent as a longtime community um, member of the community and with his background in both building maintenance and construction, as well as fire code, this would make him a good fit to be a, for service as a member. This appointment would be for a five-year term and if appointed would end on June 6, 2027. Uh, need a motion, please. I make a motion to approve uh, approval board of adjustment member Matt Hicks. I'll second that. Any discussion on the appointment? Well, it's kind of I had a conversation about this as to whether somebody should or could serve on the planning And I think I was going to talk about this maybe a little bit later, but just to go over, I think we'll still have one opening on Board of Adjustment. Is planning and zoning full at this point? Okay. So, um, Aaron Butler will be moving out of town. So as soon as Jack's windows show up, um, <laughs> he's able to, he's probably listening to me cussing me right now. Um, when they move, uh, Aaron will have to step off of planning and zoning, and then there will be an opening on planning and zoning again. Um, then I'm not sure about some of the other boards, uh, historic preservation, one opening. But Okay, but still, <laughs> still opportunities to serve for sure. So, this is a message to the public. Come on, folks, get out here and get help out on this. Any further discussion on mass appointment to this board? Oh, I think that would be great. On both. <coughs> on both. Yeah, and I was going to mention, I think. Matt will bring great perspective uh, as an officer on the fire department because we always do send, you know, plats and subdivisions and things to Chris Hines um, to review just to make sure uh, fire apparatuses will be able to get around and back up if they make a wrong turn, things like that. So uh, good perspective to have. Okay. 
Any further discussion? If not, call the roll. Mahler? Yes. Walling? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Schott? Yes. Fine? Yes. Okay. Next item, letter E. Resolution approving job description for the airport manager position. Due to the current FBL slash managers agreement not being reinstated for the paramunicipal airport, it is necessary to create a job description for an airport manager position to begin the hiring process. This would be a new position as historically the manager has been encompassed within the FBL slash managers agreement for the fixed base operator of the airport. The drafted job description was approved by majority vote from the airport commission and recommended for council approval. Any motion, please. I make a motion to pass a resolution. Second. Discussion. So a little bit more background on this. Um, Jonathan Walter with Walter Aviation, who we had the management contract with, elected not to renew that contract. Um, so he will be remaining on the airfield and doing some operations, um, but that leaves us kind of needing to find somebody to be the airport manager. Um, so historically, it's always been uh, that FBO manager, uh, two separate contracts, but always the same uh, company. Um, so I think this is a newer direction for airports to go is having a staff person, uh, could be part-time, could be full-time or a contract employee. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit, uh, you know, apply, tell us what you would like if you're applying for full-time or part-time, um, hoping to find kind of the right person to fill that position and don't wanna uh, pigeonhole ourselves into a certain type of position. So um, hopeful for that, um, but excited to be able to uh, move in this direction for this position. I've got a question. Will Jonathan be given less money now that he's not gonna be the manager? Yeah, so that was kind of the separation in that contract is the airport management contract was a paid contract and the FBO contract was more of a permission type contract to operate on the airfield. So um, now uh, he will be more like a tenant on the airfield that's operating um, and just kind of have a lease that allows him to expressly operate on the airfield. Um, so we'll not have any payment currently in this upcoming budget, we had budgeted $45,000. Um, we're also going to be taking over fuel sales at the airport, so that will provide additional revenue to uh, offset the cost of this position. So um, overall, uh, revenue neutral or positive with those fuel sales coming on. So. Any other discussion on this job description? Did any of the improvements or any of the construction have to do with the decision not to continue? No, I think uh, in the discussions and uh, David Sheffer is on the commission, so he could probably speak to it too. But I think in general, uh, he just wanted to be able to focus more on his business than have to worry about the management of the airport. So, which I get it, and rightfully so. I'd like to make the comment, Jonathan's done a wonderful job since he's been there. Yep. By commending on how things are going up there. It's really been smooth. And grow. Any further discussion? If not, call the roll, please. Walling? Yes. Mahler? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine? Yes. Thank you. And just to add a little bit on the end of that, I'll uh, plan, I'm going to try and get this posted this week and get it out and advertised. Um, I'll just also mention we have uh, just a police officer position posted, a public works street worker position posted, and the aquatics coordinator position. So we've had a little bit of shuffling around, um, but we have some positions open, so we'll be able to advertise those all together. So but hopefully I can get that posted this week and get it out on the street. Good. Okay. Next item, resolution approving an amendment 
to a uh, catalyst grant development agreement in, to, uh, in 2020. The nudgers were approved for a catalyst grant through the Iowa Economic Development Authority. This grant would finance um, the total rehabilitation of the Morgan building at 1306 Second Street. Since then, between the COVID-19 pandemic supply chain issues and fluctuating building costs, the project has stalled. Nudgers have uh, proposed a change in, in scope for this project from a full rehab to a single apartment and a semi-finished first floor to be completed by prospective tenants based on their needs. IE, IEDA has expressed their willingness to accept these new terms, but a letter from the mayor must be submitted. This resolution would authorize uh, the uh, changes on the city's end and allow the mayor to sign the corresponding request letter to be sent to IEDA. Motion, please. Make a motion to pass a resolution approving an amendment to a catalyst grant development agreement. Discussion. Comments are limited to five minutes. <laughs> Each comment? Uh, comment number one, five minutes, please start the clock. Uh, so uh, in my other work, I, I'm also a nudger. And uh, just for the for some council members who, who not aren't aware, um, Nudgers started in '99 uh, as a group determined to resurrect downtown buildings. Uh, that was the original mission. Uh, it since has kind of deviated a bit to help with um, low income senior housing, uh, the Hamlin Bell project. But the what we do and what we our passion is 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 um, and I get some mileage out of calling us the developer of last resort for the worst buildings in town. Uh, we started um, buildings that nudgers have touched and, and, re and revitalized in the past. Now is the Casa de Oro building. Um, the redheaded stepchild is still kind of the little, there's a little building just to the, to the north of the Kearns uh, building. With, and the Kearns building is again, kind of the crown jewel uh, for us was a, a tax credit large project uh, that um, had some interesting twists and turns, which they all do, uh, but we still own that and, we, and we're operating that. And it's we've had turnover in both commercial spaces. We've had the apartments been constantly rented, uh, and it's just a fantastic project. Uh, the latest here, and kind of what what we're asking for here, is the Morgan Building. So, just to give you an idea, in 2018 there was a, a fire uh, in the upper story apartments. Um, it was owned by former Mayor Shirley also a Nudger alumni, Alan Shirley, uh, I think the mayor as well, had actually started, the, he was original founding Nudger. Um, and so it was the building that they had had the Meat Cutters Union in for a number of years and travel and transport. So anyway, um, we had worked with her to co-develop the property, uh, looking for you know, the term de jour is, is layered finance, right? So you're trying to find money from all these different sources. Part of which was there's some insurance proceeds uh, we did apply for and receive a Catalyst Grant Award in 2020. Uh, as you can imagine, also in 2020, something uh, on the global scale had affected us. We at, Right before this, we had had a local Perry business who was going to buy the building from us, and they wanted to do so quickly, and we wanted to develop it quickly and, and, and basically flip it, right, and get them in here, move on to our next project. Uh, the global pandemic halted us right in our tracks. Uh, he had actually the purchase agreement. Uh, he ended up not signing that. Uh, and, 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 and so kind of to where we're at today is th with the catalyst grant is we have had uh, roughly about $200,000 worth of work done on the building. Uh, we've paid the first 100,000. The cat with the catalyst will be able to, to bring the building up to speed. What has been done so far, uh, the nudgers, we completely gutted the building ourselves. We hired some asbestos and lead uh, companies to come in and abate those from the building. Uh, we have, you know, here we are working with Jason Bark of uh, Rainbow International of Des Moines as our contractor. Uh, and he has, you know, put a new roof on the building, stabilized the back wall. We've put new windows in the building. Um, the complete framing has on you know, the interior framing has been done. Um, brought a new water line in, so so on and so forth. And so here we are. We are have made substantial progress from where this building started, uh, but we are going to be continuing to work to finish this building. Uh, we have a, a, an Ankeny business that wants to relocate to Perry. 
uh, and they want the building. They want not only the commercial space, but also the apartments. And they would like to move in by March 1st. So we're going to be figuring out how to make that happen uh, on the redevelopment of this. So the, the you know what we're asking for here in, in working with Jim Thompson of the uh, of IEDA. Uh, he's the downtown resource center guru. Is uh, he said, well, for all of the programming and other grants that are available, we need you to close out Catalyst. And so his solution is to move this from the full redevelopment of the building, which we intend to do and will do, to completing one apartment. And so that's, I think that's the ask of the council today, is to change the scope of the project from the full, the full um, revitalization to just a single apartment so we can close out the catalyst, receive the funds, and then continue with our construction. So there's three apartments. There's three apartments and then one commercial space. It's about 2,000 square feet, uh, give or take, overall. Uh, the middle. So uh, yeah, so the middle one is, is the one that's actually uh, is done. And so he's coming to inspect um, with Daniel on, on Friday. So. Is that five minutes? Is there a discussion or questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Is there no further questions? Call the roll, please. Mahler? Yes. Klein? Yes. Berkland? Yes. Walling? Yes. Shop? Yes. Be good to see that move forward. Um, next item is ordinance. The ordinance amending the code of ordinance, chapter um, 13, hotel motel tax. This ordinance would amend chapter 13, section 13.05 of the code of ordinance to properly reflect the ordinance, or excuse me, the accounting and distribution of hotel slash motel tax. This is needed as per resolution 1221-20D. Um, the city of Perry withdrew from the intergovernmental agreement with the Greater Des Moines uh, Prevention and Visitors Bureau. The agreement ends June 30th, 2022 and the portion being distributed to them for the current ordinance needs to be directed back to the city's portion. Need a motion? No. I'll second that. Discussion. So this is pretty just procedural. Um, just needs to be done by the end of the year. So at the next meeting, we'll probably ask for two readings of this, just so that we can get it published before the end of the year. And then we'll start collecting three sevenths and the chamber will continue to get four sevenths. Any further discussion or questions? If not, call the roll, please. Walling? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. Mahler? Yes. Shot? Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay. That completes our business for tonight. We stand adjourned at 648 p.m. Thank you.